Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? YDBT Daily. YDBT Daily coming at you every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. West Coast. You're just getting out of work probably and hear me. Come on. How you guys doing? <clears throat> so today was a heavy news day in the Mustang, specifically Coyote realm. The last couple of days, the last couple of shows, you've heard that the subject matters have to do with, you know, blower or turbo, when you should go blower, when you should go turbo, <clears throat> whatever. I have to make it up as I go along. But this time, I didn't have to do shit. Shelby American finally announced what the super snake is going to be, and that ended up being exactly what I thought it was going to be. A GT Mustang with a body kit, GT, GT motor, GT transmission, with a Whipple tune, they, they're going to have an NA version and a boosted version, and they're going to probably try to sell it to you for over six figures. Hilarious to me. And we're going to talk about why I think these vehicles, specifically the Super Snake variants of Gen 2 and up, are an absolute terrible, terrible buy. I don't think it's um, something that deserves a Shelby tag on it. I know it sounds stupid because uh, Dodge Omnis had a Shelby tag. Uh, Dodge um, Dakotas, was it a Dakota? The truck had a Shelby tag or a logo. <clears throat> so we'll talk about why in the modern era, nothing should have a Shelby logo unless in terms of powertrain is completely different than what the standard GT and all the other stuff is. Also, for performance, released Gen 4 Coyote crate engines. One with a single throttle body, another with a dual throttle body. They claim in their press release that the single throttle body version is tunable. The dual throttle body version is not tunable. Of course, we will speculate about every single little thing having to do with that, but not before Mr. Bill O'Reilly says hello to the people here. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. <laughs> I love that. Fucking thing sucks. It does suck. I'm struggling today, but I'll get through it. Fuck it. We got uh, PMAS. Thank James and PMAS. The best cold air intakes data wise for any coyote mustang any gt500 period pmas nick james the pmas dna have performance dna have performance the get your pmas injects from them injectors tires wheels you name it catch cans converters the fucking everything and cups shirts you name it dna have performance.com parts from parts from.com he was a little mad that i sold the uh not from under him i said you wanted to buy a car with blown hand gasket I don't know. Partsarm.com. Calmer Transmission. Calmer Transmission.com. Found out what torque hap what happens to a GT350 when you put a free flowing exhaust. It loses torque. Bellac. Kayla backwards. Two Auto Solution. Rami that on Two Auto Solution. Back on in the saddle again. Getting uh, cars in and out of the shop. Nice to see him back on track. And we got MFP. MFP of Australia. MFP Main Force Performance, which is Mac Coats. Hopefully he's feeling better. Hopefully things are doing good over in uh, Australia. We'll say hi to the people here. We'll talk about the untunable Gen 4 and the tunable Gen 4 and the untunable Super GT. Leon Phillips, Dixon, B. Levesque, Joe Swiss, Juice, Did it, Victor Sardone, Leadfoot's one of our TR. Clean out of 3GC, Mendoza, Scotty Travis, Colin Fred, Cal 2000, MCR, Pito Chiquito, Christian Duran, JD Swag, a couple of times, John 97, Monty 540, Alan the LE, B. Levesque, Stuart D. Mock E. Mock, that dude, Chris, YouTube Corrupt, and a free speech. What's up, brother? I haven't seen you in a while. Bryson Witt, what's up, man? I love that you guys have been long standing uh, fans and followers, especially YouTube Corrupt, and I think JD Swag both have the Holly Haram logo. Kaz, Rad Dad, a couple of times. Kylon, Dick James, Venom Racing, Slow 99, Fred Morales. I almost had you. This was going to be good. Evening, gentlemen. Oh my God, what the hell did I click? Did someone fucking put a link in the chat? Uh, Bryson, oh, the Patreon link. Thank you so much. I was like, what in the hell is happening? I clicked it by mistake. Uh, Burt, Valley 10 Speed, Paul Pond Feud, Smoking Abel says, We Live. Nick Nair, uh, Heath, J, Rodney, Josh Roy, EG Performance, Mofla, EG, what's up, EG? Jose Sanchez, TJ Sikorsky, Agent Orange, let's get to the bottom and we'll talk some shit for a little bit. Peter Chow, Hoodie, Elva Galarga, El Verga, Lad, got Mr. Prime, Mike Jones, who? Louis Lou, Super Duty, Phil Fez, S550. And as always, if you want to become a Patreon member, all you have to do is click the link that Bryson would put up there and you will be able to, um, you know, get in touch with 
like-minded people here. We got chats going on. We got a little bit of everything going on. So I think you guys would really enjoy it. Um, I only have the ability to put up about eight chats at a time. So I had to delete a couple of chats. So fret not. I only did that because... I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, new chats were coming along. And it's nice to see a bunch of chats going on. So we got the introduce yourself chat. Uh, I also have a chat that's saying um, promote your business. Plug your business. Uh, if you are a member of the Patreon page, you can go in there and plug your business. So if anyone needs or can use your business or anything like that, please go ahead, get in there, plug your business, see what you're doing. We got show subject ideas. A little bit of everything, and we got direct messages up the ass that I'm dealing with a bunch of people outlining their builds, and that it keeps me busy all day, all night, and I am glad to do it because you guys pay a monthly nut to have that happen. Okay, let's get right to the brass tacks of the motor stuff. Shelby GT Super Snake is stupid. So, on Instagram, which is very smart for um, Ford Performance to do, is they released coming this summer. This is a late model restoration post, but it's from Ford Performance. Um, they're now introducing the Gen 4, Gen 4X. Which one would you choose for an engine swap? So the Gen 4 is supposedly 480 horsepower. The Gen 4X, 460. You would think it's backwards, but more torque. Interesting. So let's decompile what the specs are. There's different part numbers, same born stroke, same compression ratio, horsepower difference. The dual throttle body version is 480 horse at 7100 rpm 415 torque so i think that's just a manifold change the single throttle body version is 460 420 um dual throttle body single throttle body dual 80 millimeter single 80 millimeter for the x version oil pan and steel speed dense aha engine control type speed density the gen 4x mass air something tells me they're probably going to use a Gen 3 control system to control the Gen 4X if the sensors are the same, if the cams are parked in a similar position, if the intake manifold is a Gen 3 manifold. This is just a Gen 4 long block. That's all it is, a Gen 4 long block with a Gen 3 manifold and throttle body. That's my speculation. So that's what people have all, you know, go crazy over. Right here, it says tunable. No. On the Gen 4, the Gen 4X, yes. Again, I don't have any insider information, but I suspect that Ford is simply going to give you a long block with a Gen 3 intake and throttle body and allow you to tune it with a Gen 3 unless there is something off with the harness, the connections, or the cam position. Now, do I think this is any better than um, a Gen 3 control uh, uh, long block? No. Fuck no. If it's not tunable, the Gen 4 variant with dual throttle bodies, what the fuck good is it? Why would you, why would you get excited over a crate engine that you can put in a car, but it cannot be configured in any other way but the way Ford offers it? How many of you have swaps that delete the IMRC because the IMRC gets in the way of the firewall or, or the firewall gets in the way of the IMRC? Many of you, specifically Coyote swap guys on Fox bodies, they say, hey, just delete the IMRC. It's kind of in the way. We'll just get rid of it. Get rid of all that bullshit in the back and lock it open. Well, guess what? You can't tune it. The Gen 4 crate motor with a dual throttle body cannot be tuned and it is speed density no tuning so if you do anything in terms of configuration different than what ford offers it what the fuck are you buying an untunable crate motor and then if you're buying the gen 4 x you're buying a gen th gen 4 bottom end in my opinion and a gen 3 architecture to tune it because if it's mass air and math, not speed density like the Gen 4, what else does Ford offer that has that architecture? Single throttle body, 460 horse, but let's say a Gen 4 long block. The fucking Gen 3. It's a Gen 3. Why would you buy a Gen 4X over a Gen 3? It does not make any sense. So don't get too excited because a lot of people are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Alex has said it's tunable. I go, I don't think so. I don't think that 
it is tunable because think about it this way. If the 24 Mustang is not tunable and Ford allows the Gen 4 motor that's in the 24 Mustang with dual throttle bodies to be tuned via a control pack, then in theory, that tune in the control pack that in theory was open can be used to unlock and decompile and flash 24 Mustangs. Because what is a control pack tune that doesn't, what is the difference between a control pack PCM and harness than one in a car that comes from Ford? The body control module, the ABS module, the steering module, all of the nannies pared down to just control the motor. That's all it is. It's not anything above and beyond that. So if tuners and uh, programmers get a hold of a computer from a Gen 4 that's supposedly tunable, which I don't think it is, and I don't think it'll be, then Ford is helping defeat the emissions lock or the uh, tampering device on the 24 Mustang. They would never do that. So in my opinion, the Gen 3, I'm uh, sorry, the Gen 4X is just a Gen 3 architecture in terms of control system but with maybe a gen 4 long block and then the gen 4 is not tunable dump it in the car the way it sits dual throttle you're gonna pay extra money to have a, a a control pack you can't tune why do you think people swap these into cars they put a cold air on it. They put their own sauce on it. They want to put a Cobra Jet on it. They want to put a blower on it. They want to put a top mount. Unless you're going to get a Whipple tune control pack situation. Oh my freaking God. And speaking of stupid, dumb vehicles, like one of the dumbest vehicles ever thought of has been the Shel the modern Shelby Super Snake variants that while they look great, it's a GT with a body kit, a GT motor, a GT transmission, and you have an NA version and a blower version. So you're paying sixty or $50,000 more for a blower, body kit, wheels, and Shelby name. That's what you're paying for. So let's talk about why I think this is a specifically stupid, stupid car. Ever since Shelby stuff mattered, meaning I want to say GT500. Ever since that mattered, they've been different than the GT, right? They've been totally different than the GT. In 2006, if I'm not mistaken, Shelby had a NA version, a Shelby GT. And I appreciate that. And I, and I think, let me see, 2006, 2006 Shelby GT. Yeah, um, uh, is it this one? 2006? Yeah, they had they had a Shelby GTH, which is like a Hearst. Um, 2006 Shelby GT, and I think in 2005 or 2009, let me see, 2005 Shelby GT, no, and I think 2009 they had like a like an NA version of a of a Shelby GT. Yes. Uh no, no, no. They 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 only show GT 500s. Okay, so that brings me to my point. In 2007, a, a Shelby GT500 had a 5.4 liter M122 supercharger TR6060 in a fucking S197 chassis. So at least the Shelby name carried a bump in horsepower, a better trans than the GT, and, and it's supercharged, and it has a bigger motor. That happened all the way up in 2014. Everything that had a Shelby name up until 2014 14 had a better actually 20 let's just let, let's just stick to gt500 had a better engine option trans option and supercharged over the gt then the gen 2 comes out and it's just a gt 15 to 17 gt in 16 the shelby gt350 was different than the gt 5.2 3160 trans um variable exhaust High revving, great brakes, wide body front end. Oh, the perfect car. The perfect car is a Shelby GT350. If you can get your hands on an R, you have one of the better balanced vehicle ever made by Ford. But then for whatever reason, they did not take the Shelby GT500 and make that a super snake. They started offering GTs, right? The same engine, same trans that came in a GT, 
and threw a Whipple on it and then called that a super snake. So people like me started going, what's so super about that? It's not based off of a snake. Everything that had the Shelby name before that had a bump in horsepower or at least a different engine configuration, not the exact same engine and transmission that came in a GT. So that's why I call this the Super GT. The Super Snake to me, if you're a Shelby nut hugger, sure, buy it if you're happy having a car that is literally based off of a GT, have at it. The GT500s were not based off of a GT. GT500s of 07 to 14 were their own engine, own trans, different brakes, just different different everything. It, it's had slightly different body parts. It, they didn't take a GT and then Shelby eyes it. Ford made the GT500 like it was. It wasn't Shelby eyes. Then Super Snakes were Shelby eyes based off of a GT500. So I think that the, the Shelby Super Snake modern variant is just, they're pissing on your leg and calling it rain. They're like, yeah, Shelby, Super, Super Snake. And you're going, oh, Super Snake. It's a Whipple kit on a fucking GT with a body kit and wheels for an extra $60,000. Hell, you could make a better car for less money than you could. But I get it. It doesn't have the Shelby backing. So we'll talk about that. Let's get the Super Chats out of the way. And then we'll talk to the people here. Just a little channel support for helping me sort out my buddy's Gen 2. He needs a clutch now. It was it was Tool, McLeod, RST, way to go. It was Tool, Okay. McLeod RST, the way to go. If it's NA, yes. Alex, I don't know shit about London NA tune. Question, my Mustang has a recall requiring BCM updates for, for brake fluid systems. Does that affect my NA tune? Slow, Sean, if you go in there, they're not going to be able to read your tune or your body control module with a Lund tune on it. You have to flash the stock tune back in it or use the proper vehicle ID if they have access to that. And Hatch450 says, leaving a like early night. Uh, have a good night, Amory. Thank you so much. So are you in the same camp I am? Do you think the Super Snake is absolutely snake oil? I think so because there's nothing above and beyond of what a GT currently is. Whereas the Shelby GT500s were its own thing. And would you buy a Gen 4 crate motor if you can't tune it? Maybe you want to have the latest and greatest. Maybe you're one of those guys that has an iPhone 13. I don't even know where they're at right now. Let's say the latest and greatest is an iPhone 15 and you have the 14 and it's six months old, you gotta have the 15 just to be on on you know on game so you don't look weird. If you're that guy, sure, the Super Snake is right up your alley. Technically, Ford did the same thing in Australia with their Mustang R-Spec when they couldn't sell a GT350 there in 2018. They gave you, Nick, a R-Spec GT when the GT350 was not able to be sold in Australia? Are you telling me I cannot get a GT350 or an R in Australia? Boy, the Shelby F-150 is equally as gay. I agree 100%. Shelby seems to be, Shelby seems to mean more from Ford. Shelby American is no different than the new Celines. What was the old one they used to have above the GT500? Was it a Super Snake? Yes, the Super Snake and the KR and then the Shelby 1000, which is literally a 1000 horsepower GT500. Highway robbery for the body kit. Ford paid licensing fees for the Shelby name. Um, someone says, but it's collector. And you're not wrong. If you're a collector car guy and you for some reason think the Shelby name matters, vaya con Dios, that's a good buy. I <clears throat> don't care. The only reason I bought my Shelby is because it was the cheapest race car I could get into. Think about it. How much does it cost to build an 8.1 second GT500? <clears throat> Think about it. Probably $100,000. I got it for 60. And I was like, I could do that. And the guy was nice enough to get me on a payment plan. Paid it off in two years, which is about like fucking 12000 a quarter, which is not easy to do four years ago because I've had the car almost four years. So I've always wondered, what's the allure? I don't see a Shelby and I go, whoa. I never do that. I go, ah, nice car cool car i don't go oh gotta have it when i drive a, G a shelby gt350 i go nice car i don't go whoa i gotta have it you know what i see and i go oh gotta have it a v3 a cadillac cts v3 a zr1 corvette i go holy shit son that's what gets my go the shelby stuff is very cool i'm not gonna deny that 
but it is not something I look at as upper echelon badass motherfuckers. And before you guys start going, oh, I looked at your Chevy car now, my dad owned a Cadillac. I took my driving test on a Cadillac when I was 17 years old. I learned to drive on a Cadillac. I I mean, Cadillac has been in my family since I was fucking 12. So don't think that just because in the last 10 years I've been a, a coyote guy does not mean that I don't appreciate nice shit that's domestic. Um... What do we got here? We got Mr. Prime says, I think it makes some power, same power as the previous generation. Last one got stomped out by the 2018 Demon. I don't know what he's talking about. Super Snakes are perfect for donuts at takeovers. Zimbabwe Champion says, um, the Super Snake has been a dud up badging since 13, 14 model stop production. Would rather have a Gen 2 over the Gen 4. Case closed. Broke ass white boy. Been a member for 31 months says, Hey, Alex, don't forget about the Celine Black Label Mustangs they're putting out there for $110,000. And it's basically their version of Super Snake. So I think the problem is the Barrett Jackson culture. Bear with me, guys. I, I make shit up as I go along. I remember when Barrett Jackson was what I would wait to watch every year after the Super Bowl. Super Bowl was over. Oh, no, right before the Super Bowl. There's nothing car-related when you're in the Northeast. When you're in the Northeast, it's cold, and you're dying for it to be warm outside. That first 50-degree day, you think it's summer. So there's nothing to do. It's freezing, and you just want to see car shit on TV because you're doing nothing. You're going through a a slight depression uh, for six months out of the year. Then the Bear Jackson auctions comes on, and you're like, holy shit, this is so cool. And then they prop up the car. And they're like, this is a one-of-one red four-speed Barracuda Hemi, Hemi Cuda in red. So, you know, drunk guys in the audience were like, really? Holy shit, $3 million. They get everyone liquored up. They overly sell these cars. And then people get, you know, buyer's remorse, I'm sure. Now they have a... $4 $4 million Barracuda that they're like, oh, it's not that cool. But but it was hot for the time. So what did that do to everyone else that had a piece of shit rolling chassis Barracuda in their garage somewhere in Southbridge, Massachusetts? Oh, my car. I'm not taking a dime under $300,000 for that rolling chassis. Well, how do you come to that price? That one of one Cuda sold for 4 million bucks. So, of course, my rolling chassis without an engine with rust everywhere is worth at least a hundo. So, I'm keeping that motherfucker. So, Carol Shelby dies. Rest in peace. He's up in heaven uh, chewing gum. Well, time to take credit for vehicles I never had anything to do with. Where's my chewing gum? Okay, so now he's chewing gum in heaven. He passes away. And all of a sudden, price goes up. Price goes up. Yesterday's Yesterday's price is not today's price. So he passes away. Yesterday's price is not today's price. All of a sudden, anything with the name Shelby doubled, tripled, quadrupled, ridiculous. He's dead as fuck. Time to sell his automatic twin turbo, twin supercharged Cobra that, oh, Two million, three million, five million. Oh! Now Shelby goes, wait a minute. He dead now. Now we can slap this fucking logo on everything and jack up the prices because he dead now. So they started slapping Shelby on everything. Socks, chili, suitcases. I have a fucking Shelby shirt. I mean, you name it. It became Shelby everything to capitalize and cash in on a name. Is that vehicle worth anything? No. Is anything after 2012 have any influence and input from Carol Shelby himself? Fuck no. But this is what people would say every single time they build something in his honor. Carol Shelby would have loved this. How the fuck do you know? 
How the fuck you think? How the fuck do you know he wouldn't be like, where's my where's my gum? No time to take credit for vehicles I never had anything to do with. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this thing's a piece of shit. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Shelby. This thing's a piece of shit. Throw it. Get the fuck out of here. So now that has just gone ban bananas. Just stupid. Slap a name on it. Has nothing to do with Carol Shelby. None of his vision. Nothing. Let's just pay for the licensing. Pay for the brand. And keep keep charging people. Because let's be honest. Take the Shelby name out of it. How much is a Gen 2 supercharged DCT Mustang really worth? Which is a 2020 GT500. It's a Gen 2 DCT supercharged Mustang. I'd say 70000 bucks. I'd say 75000 bucks at most. But now that it's a... Sh Let's say it was a Cobra. Right? Take the Shelby name out of it. Let's say you have a Cobra. Let's say you have a Cobra right here. And it is a 2020, quote-unquote, Cobra DCT. Same Recaro seats, same brakes, same exact vehicle. But then right next to it, you got a red and white striped candy cane looking ass. Same exact vehicle, but it is a Shelby GT500. Tell me, how much more money does that add to that vehicle? Twenty five to 30000 bucks. If the name was Cobra, ain't no fucking way they were able to get a hundred thousand dollars for a fucking gen 2 mustang it's a gen 2 mustang put the name cobra on it it loses all its allure all of its value but you slap the name shelby on it and put some stripes on it oh shit you can charge twenty thousand dollars for stripes and motherfuckers will flex that that's what they opted for yeah you see those stripes yeah what about them i paid twenty thousand for them stripes Excuse me, what? Yeah, I paid twenty thousand dollars for those stripes, motherfucker. I could put stripes on my car for five thousand bucks. Yeah, but they're not done at Ford, and they're not Shelby stripes, bitch. Unbelievable shit that's going on out there. So the Barrett Jackson uh, culture jacked up and made Shelby climb in price, capitalizing on his death capitalizing on his death wait until mr roush passes away you know that hammer you know that three valve jackhammer that's in your garage that has five thousand miles you polish the bitch all the time you got it up on jack stands you turn it on once a week you put some stable fuel in it over the winter you take it to the car show you have polish it with your mother's stupid fucking duster right and once Mr. Jack Roush finally says, I see my pair. And he passes away. That jackhammer goes from being a $26,000 car to a $30,000, $50,000 car. The blackjack and Celine with his big titted wife. Good for you, Papa. Ram those home. Good for you. Good. I'm telling you. It's going to happen. The last words of Jack Roush. A gym of Good for you. Hi, this is Alex. He does videos and um, he's a tuner. Good for you. Unreal. 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 Days of SVT doing special things are over. Chuck Wazerowski says, LOL, $15,000 king of the road hoods. Depends on how many cans of chili are in the truck. <laughs> I love you. If it's worth ninety thousand dollars, that the seats are full of Carol Shelby, come. That's the thing. There's not too many rusted out fox. There's too many rusted out boxes here. Who kicks the bucket first, Roush or Celine? Hey, we could have a dead death pool. Um, I can't stand stripes. Almost ripped the stripes off of my three hundred and fifty R, but at least they're black, so they aren't as goofy. Um, blackjacks already sell for forty thousand dollars. Nice. Laugh myself. I can hear Roush four twenty seven three R getting all butthurt. Hey man, fuck you, man. You know, you know, for the time, <laughs> that's my favorite, for the time, this thing was badass. Don't get me wrong. 
a 2.3 liter Roush hammer, three valve, with an, I think they had an illuminator version of it too, if I'm not mistaken, or good cars. They're good cars. You're, that's the only time you're ever going to hear me say that a, a, a Roush car was good when it came with a 2.3 liter Roush blower, factory, five speed, good shit. It's the same thing that Porsche, in the Porsche game, man. It's all about the window sticker. Yeah, man, I paid 600 for the fire extinguisher under the passenger seat. You know what I found out about Porsche? That the top dog Porsche, and please, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, is the GT2? Isn't it the GT2 or something like that? Like RS or something? Like the Billy Badass Dumb Shit, the 911 GT2 RS that came with 690 horsepower is supposedly the baddest motherfucker ever made by that company. Am I right? Everyone says, Alex, this is the god car for Porsche. And I go, really? And then I saw the price, $400 thousand dollars now i don't know that they're worth that what were they new let me see gt2 rs price this is a 2019 so they were four okay msrp of 293 but according to everything look at right here car gurus four hundred and fourteen thousand dollars 489 a gt3 rs three guys the the ridiculousness of the upcharge for the name you can buy a, if you can get a gt3 rs without getting hosed by a dealership you can turn it around tonight and make a hundred thousand dollars so i think a lot of people thought that was going to be the shelby gt500 and for a little while it was okay oh my god i got a What's the what's the what's the gayest edition? The one where you they called it a golden ticket, and I don't know why they called it a golden ticket car. I don't I don't understand the background of why they called it a golden ticket, but like heritage edition. Oh, oh. And they stupidly bought it for 120, 130, 140 with a 22, 23, 2400 dollars car payment. And they were hoping that they could enjoy it for a year or two, and then they could just flip it for $170,000. And uh-oh, that's not what happened. What ended up happening is now you can get into any GT500 for under 80000 bucks. Maybe not a Heritage Edition, maybe not a Golden Ticket situation, but you can get into any GT500 for 80000 Did y'all motherfuckers think a Gen 2 Mustang was going to appreciate in value? You really thought that was going to happen? Appreciate? Now, we'll see what happens with the 24 GT500 or 25 GT500, which is rumored to come out. Is it tunable? If it is not tunable, it doesn't matter. Imagine you buy a GT500 and you start doing dumb shit like mixing in 30% ethanol to make it go faster on the stock tune. Eh, just trim it in. It's all good crazy shit track pack gt500 with carbon fiber wheels are probably still a hundred thousand bucks but they were buying them a base gt500 meaning nothing special 110 105 boy you guys are crazy <clears throat> um jet no says the, the dt3 rs is different the 2rs 3rs is na 2rs is terrible. exactly the 2rs is the top dog according to everything i have been told on patreon and all of my um other social media pages. Um, but but it says Shelby sold the couple of golden ticket Mustangs. I can guarantee yo, they are now buried in those cars. SVT Chapa. Let's look. <sighs> okay. What was the highest price you guys saw that a carbon fiber track pack GT500 sold for? Heritage edition or not? I saw them for damn near $120,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this guy. I saw them for damn near $120,000. Then the dealer had the audacity to jack them up for another thirty-five dollars to $40,000. The Dodge Demon 170 
is the only car I can say kept its value. So if you didn't pay a markup for a Dodge Demon, Dodge Demon, Demon, not the 170, just the regular one. Oh my Lord. Oh my God. How much was a brand new in? Oh my God. Look at this. Look, and this is just according to Google, right? In 2018, a 2018 Dodge Demon Challenger, 119 to $200,000. Guys, 119 to $200,000. The Demon went up in value. So a lot of people thought that's what's going to happen with everything else. The difference was the Demon was special. You can say it's gay. You can say it's a, uh, you know, a, a black guy's car, you know, uh, whatever. It was a specific drag pack vehicle. The Demon has an allure. The Demon has the chops. The GT500 did not because it was a fucking Gen 2 Mustang, bro. Nothing special about it. Bad trans. Slower than a GT. Cannot make a GT500 go quicker than a GT mod for mod. It was the craziest thing. Motherfuckers bought 30, 40, 50 over sticker, thinking it was going to be a good uh, uh, investment, ended up being a bad, bad hit in their pocketbooks. My boss bought a Porsche exclusive manufacturer 911 Dakar, but I didn't get a raise. I'm so glad he was able to buy that. See, that's not how it works, Rad Dad. Do you have a job? Right? Did your check show up every week? Do you work really hard at your job? Do you go out of your way to show initiative and to show that you're willing to grow within the company? Or do you come in at 801 and clock out at 359? Because if you come in at 801 and clock out at 359, you're not going to get a raise. And people will say, well, it doesn't matter if you work 60 hours, you're still not going to notice it. Bullshit. I know every single company I worked for, over 30 of them, I grew within the company within a year fast because I am literally a worker type. If I got to come in at work at, at, at uh, 8, I'm there at 7.30. Oh, you're just sucking, sucking ass. I'd like to get a bigger paycheck. So if they see me coming in early, leaving later, working really hard, making their stream, streamlining their process, and you become a high-value employee, they give you more money. Ford needs you performance pack GT with CJ on drag pack. Dodge has a challenge of 1320. No, it doesn't. My brain exploded when I started dabbling into the 911, finally settled, and still didn't get a top-tier investment. The 170 is flex fuel from the factory, too. Starkey's wife Weber says, wow, I could buy a demon with the money from my wife's deal with Whipple. Sorry, I'm not privy to the Porsche code. Um, I'm so late. Sorry, buddy. You got to do shit. Uh, isn't the GT500 a Gen 2 body with a different front end? It's a, it's, it's a Gen 2 body. It's a Gen 2. Um, that boss worked his ass off for that Dakar, and he risked everything. He invested in the machinery. He rents out the building. He pays you. How much How much do you think it, it costs him to employ you? Do you guys think that when you get paid 20 bucks an hour, that your boss is paying paychecks 20 bucks an hour? No. Nope. He's got workman's comp. He's paying half of your investments. He's paying three quarters of your insurance and dental. It costs him 35 bucks an hour to pay you 20. Stop it. How do I know this? Jake from Power by the Hour. He owns a small business. I know what it costs him to employ somebody at 20 bucks an hour. <clears throat> Bet that motherfucker works 40 hours a week. I program and I build up the company, increase profits 1 million just last year, alone by increasing reliability and decreasing loss. Keep doing it. And if they don't recognize that you're good, get another job. He only works 39 hours a week. Alejandro says, in 2016, saw a GT350 being sold for 100000 over sticker. Mr. Prime 269 says, Alex, did you see the Throttle House video of the 2018 Demon stomping out the Super Snake? Yes. If the company values efficiency, yes. Some companies value networking and brown nosing over performance, but it shows. The GT2 RS has more power than the 3 RS. The 3 RS is faster. No, it's quicker. It's quicker around the road course. I've worked for the same company for damn near 15 years. A car company started $8. Now I make six figures. My boss buys sick cars and we all love it. Do you think I look at John Lund and I go, I don't like the fact that you bought an airplane. 
You could have given me another $2 an hour my paycheck. No. I go, we are able to make this guy's dreams fucking come true. And you know what he does at the end of the year? He gives us the fattest fucking bonus, bro. It's dumb. It, it's borderline, I feel guilty. Okay? So I don't stress it. I know that around Christmas time, a big fat fucking check is coming. So I'm not stressing it. And... The motherfucker gives you money of quarterly bonuses and, you know, a perfor- performance bonuses. Dude, the, and if you if we won the event, he gave us all money, like a lot of money. I went, man, I feel a little guilty, <laughs> but not that guilty. I took it. How much you think you net? You, how much do you think you net the company with that one mil? I own my own business on the side, programming and automating. Good. Good for you. I, everyone on the chat has to have a side hustle i love you guys if you're a 40 hour a weeker you I, I i you're you're screwing yourself you need to have a side hustle as a man not a woman if you're a woman you need to find yourself a good fucking man early in life too in your 20s and lock him in because the older you get after you do independent shit your value goes down so your value is up you're in your 20s? You're looking good? Lock it in with someone who is going places. Crazy how people are moving out there nowadays. Well said about showing up and working hard. The right people will always notice a hard worker. Do you don't think senior goes into the system and sees that I might have logged in at 8 o'clock because I was helping out Rami or I was helping out a customer that hit me up on Instagram or someone that hit me up on Patreon. I was like, Alex, man, I really hate to bug you, bro. I'm like, I don't want to cross streams like that. But I'll take care of you, dude. I'm not saying that if you pay me, I will do that. But I'm saying if you're a customer and you hit me up in the right channels and you're in a bind, like your car doesn't start, I don't mind logging in and helping a brother out. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, If your boss does not recognize your work ethic, bounce, find your value somewhere else. And if you can get a raise, use that as leverage up against your boss. Say, hey, I got a job offer at such and such for another 20,000 a year. Can you match it? Uh, since day one, I've had a side hustle. It's the only way to get what I want. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. Absolutely. Women nowadays don't understand. If you're in your 20s and you think you're going to be Miss Independent, and by the time you're 30, you've become independent, you're going to be single for a long ass time, honey. Because men are just going to use you up. But if you're 20 something and you're young and you got it going on, lock it in with a guy that's got it going on. I like stripping for gay men on the weekend, says Berroto. Got to find my side hustle here soon. Um, EPA says need to have multiple side streams of income. You should have worked next to Kevin Samuels. I did a dating channel for a while. Stop doing it. It was actually fucking up my dating life, believe it or not. I work 66 to 70 hours a week. I would love a side hustle that worked in my life. Unk. What side hustle would you be good for a 21-year-old who works 40 hours a week full-time as a college student? Oh, man. You know, I love you. And we can get on we can get on real life talk here for a little bit, but I, I, I think college is a fucking waste of time. If you're going to college, if you're going to college and you're studying something that's not a STEM field, I don't know what to tell you. It's got to be a STEM field engineering, you know, some kind of mechanical engineering, mathematics, something. If you're going for fucking, you know, economics, well, economics could probably help you. But I'm saying something like liberal arts, I love you. As a 21-year-old, you got to get whatever you can, okay? A side hustle is a side hustle. It could be fucking Chipotle. I know, it sounds stupid, but you're 21. What skills do you have to offer anyone but that? So what you do is, you go to college, you have, a, you have a main gig, and whatever time you have left over, if you don't have a girlfriend, I, I suggest you in your 20s, you don't fuck with girls at all. You fuck them, but don't wife them. You get established, and in your 30s, you're able to get yourself a 20-year-old. Um, you'll never have as much energy in life than in your 20s. Exactly. Clutch pedal got stuck on my 2017 GT while drag racing. Now, every time I press the clutch, I hear whirling coming around the clutch, louder when pressing in any gear when the clutch is pressed. It sounds like you got a mechanical problem in the clutch area. Going to the gym, dropping a like, listen to the replay at work tomorrow. I locked in my husband and my boyfriend in my 30s. Good for you. <laughs> I love that this motherfucker stays on character. What is the picture? What is the picture? I can't see the picture. It looks, it looks creepy. Longstroke says, I bought a 22 GT500 carbon fiber track pack because I wanted the best Mustang that 
Ford had. People get pissed off when I tell them it's a Cobra. Roush had more to do with this car than Shelby did. You were a ho. PAS and Roush perform Performance Assembly Solutions has more to do with Eaton power systems and vetting of the Ford architecture that's supercharged than anyone else. Um, have to get that college degree from Costco. Yes. Unless you're my age, you should be working way more than 40 hours a week in your 20s and 30s. I work probably, after it's all said and done, close to 70 total. I'm saying channel, editing, um, Patreon, um, live streams, prepping for the live streams. Just work that earns me money is over um, over 70 hours, 60 to 70 hours. Um, that you have to study something that is usable. Ask yourself, what can I use this for? Exactly. Dad says, that's what my girl and I did. Shut her mouth and stack assets. I don't agree with you about college. Engineering, oh, you didn't hear me. A STEM field. Unless you're going for a STEM field, which is engineering is one of them. I'll, 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 okay, STEM field. STEM fields. Science, technology, engineering, and math. Anything having to do with science, technology, engineering, and math, college is your go-to. If you're going to figure it out and party for the first two years and then figure out what you'll do for a major, you're fucked. I have a master's degree in just going to work, and I knew before graduating high school, college was never going to be for me. An EPA is successful. Has a banging wife, two great kids, looking to twin turbo, see a Corvette, a Ducati, a big-ass fucking house. He's doing good. Macho man's in the pit. Gotcha. Um... Three years for multi-craft industrial maintenance, making more than some doctors that goes for eight years. Cole Daniel. I'm 21, making 80000 a year in the trades. They're the way to go. Good. Man, I love it. I love it. When I see young guys getting after it in the trades, millwright, welding, electrician, plumbing, bro, that is a six-figure career in five years. Um, Dan Theo, putting us young dudes on game, I'm going to get my shit together. One thing that the dating channel did really well is... Uh, educate the younger guys to get after it and stop fucking around. No video games, no chasing bitches, none of that. Get to fucking work. I work 30 a week as a licensed therapist, 100 an hour. Good for you. Um, <clears throat> uh, I sent, okay, oof, I sent that before I said, I heard Steph, got it. Jamie says, you're going to burn out, trust me. I know, bro, I was killing 70 hours a week in aerospace. Thanks for the thanks for the birds, bro. Oh, I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm, I'm tired. I'm not going to be on. I'm not going to lie. I'm very tired, but what else am I going to do? What else am I going to do? What else am I going to do? If I have all this free time and I'm a single guy, what else am I going to do? Go to the beach, enjoy life, get that money because I know that tuning might not be a thing forever. So I have to establish a side hustle and let's say this side hustle maintains and let's say tuning goes away because EPA and whatever and Biden wins again somehow. Somehow we elect a corpse to fucking become a president. There goes that, right? 24 Mustang not tunable and people are betting on the fact that it's going to become tunable. Guys, it might become tunable, but it's going to be a long time before it's vetted. Look at the F-150s. You're willing to wait two years for that to become tunable or just wait till it becomes tunable and then buy it. That's the move. I would recommend a technical... College, get a skill. Nat Chu says, I've hired many people. I take years worth of experience over any degree. Uh, 27, making 70,000 a year. Work harder than most. Good for you, Dick James. <laughs> Dick James. Got a decent paying job trying to clock as much OT as I can to fund the Gen 3 swap. I remember Solar Boom in Minnesota. Hit him up, making $62 an hour, 150 a day per diem. Work 12 hours every day. I'd love to just work 40 hours. If I can somehow make $200,000 a year, in 40 hours, yeah, <sniffs> cool, no problem, but I can't, and I and I like to be busy, but you know, that could change if my priorities change, but right now, I have a very small window, guys, of making money, and you need to understand how I look at it. I'm 46, a lot of you guys probably go, Alex is cool, you know, he's so hot, <laughs> he's super in shape, and I like him. And you think Alex is younger than yet. No, I'm 46. I'm four years from the big 5-0, okay? I have a very small window 
to make as much money as possible as I can. And I'm in the middle of that window. I'm fucking dead center. I'm in the center of the efficiency island of that window. So I'm going to make as much money as I can, build the baddest cars as I can, sell the GT500 after it runs an eight, get into a house, try to line up everything so that by the time I'm maybe 52, three, four, five, then throttle it back. Still do this if, if, if I'm so relevant. And um, if it's even more successful, awesome. Like if I can, Tim Poole said something yesterday that just, it, it, it grabbed me. He goes, I could wake up every day. Listen to this. Tim Pool, Tim Cass IRL, uh, podcast type thing. He goes, I can get up and work seven hours or four hours a day, a day. Get up, do the news, talk about it, put out videos, and make a million dollars a year. If it's just me by myself. I can go skiing. I can go skateboarding. I can do whatever the fuck I want. He has such a great network that all he has to do is work about 16 to 18 hours a week put out live streams or shows and make bank. So now I'm in the middle of doing this to hopefully establish that. If I can eventually establish something that is more membership based, look at the Patreon stuff. The Patreon stuff is starting to take over my YouTube earnings, which is crazy because the YouTube earns really good. So add revenue here, Patreon memberships here, provide a service, stack, 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 stack. And by the time I'm 50, hopefully... I have a cushion to fall back on if tuning goes away. So that's my motivation. You'll be dead in six months if you stop. You're not wrong. I tell you, the military is the way to go. Four years and they pay for a bachelor's and master's plus 100% disability for the military. Four to three hundred a month, non-taxable. I would talk to Dakota and Brandon before you say military is the way to go. Them college people talk down trades for years just for them to beg us to pay for student debt. Exactly. Those calves are popping. Jamie Easton says, I had to cut back, I had to cut back man, because it was becoming wedged between my family. I don't have a family, right? So if I wanted to start a family, sure, I would find me a nice 20-something-year-old girl because let's be honest, geriatric pregnancy isn't what I want to do if I want to have a kid and start a family and then, okay, back it off. But I don't just me and Tony chilling. Um, I watched a 24 year old guy buy a sweet asset for 50 and a badass Lux fifth wheel camper. He was a welder and a good one. EPA says, if I had to give young guys in the chat advice, it would be, don't be afraid to take a risk and fail. Pick yourself up. And he, uh, uh, picks himself up, learn from the mistakes, move on. Why'd you delete that? That's a good message. Uh, community college better than trade school. When you're 60, You'll still want to do this stuff, I bet. I hope so. John Sr. is 60. John Sr. works really hard. John Sr. works harder than most 20-year-olds. So I, he's my motivation, but I want to look a little better. You know, I want to, I want to maintain as much as I can. TRT is going to be uh, not too long in the distant future. Um, my buddy wants to get into tuning. Where should he start? What did you do? I talk shit on Facebook, and a tuning company picked me up. Let's be honest. My path to tuning is the, most, is the most unique path to tuning anyone has ever taken. Where else did a guy talking shit on Facebook, shit posting, somehow become one of the leading voices in the late model coyote tuning game? It's actually hilarious. Stop it, Rebecca. After high school, I didn't know what to, what I wanted to do. Went to community college and then realized I was just wasting money in terrible classes that taught me nothing. Got a job, never looked back. Jacob Trujillo says, off topic, question, can you use an F-150 computer on a 650? They tried, Jacob. That was one of the first things that I think HP tuners attempted to do is to take an F-150 computer that you can flash with. It's, it's an MC, what's it called? Hold on. I got to look up what the... Uh, the computer is called MG1 or something like that. MG, it's not a TC298. It's like an MG1 or something. It's not a tricore. Let me see. Uh, MG1. So they took an MG1 computer, which is the F150 21 and up version, and they tried to flash a Mustang with it. It would it would flash, but nothing would happen. I think they it just it just wouldn't take a tune. It just it just wouldn't take. So they already attempted that. Trades will pay you to go to school if you provide for them and they will pay you provide for you. You can make all the money you want. You have everything. At the end of the day, the family is everything to me. I get it. My car's money won't care for me when I'm 80 years old. Money's Raymond, I get it. You have a family. I don't. 
I, I will die alone in the Fairmont. Be buried in it. I guarantee it. Unless I meet this perfect girl and I somehow want to pop out kids. And, you know, who, who the fuck knows? But I, I just don't think I'm there. I just don't think I'm there. I don't want to be a fucking 60-year-old dad with a 13-year-old, even though I'd be jacked. So it's all good. The army is stupid easy. You get told what, how to do it and where to do it, and if you're good at it, you get promoted. <laughs> I figured you used your YDBT Tumblr, Tumblr for drinks. It's uh, dirty right now. I hired Alex to tune for us because of his calves. Thank you. Anyone in the pipeline? Does Gen 4 from 50 Mustang have the same firing order? I don't think so, but I'm not 100% sure. Spanish wood from the oak tree, LOL. Stop smoking the devil's lettuce so I can get my CDL working on... And Okay, if anybody here smokes weed, stop. Stop. I, I know, we're, this is not a car thing. But we're talking about motivation. I don't know of any pot smoker that's highly successful because he's a hard worker. They all chill out. They all are just low energy. Chill chill vibe listen to fucking reggae nobody that i know that smokes weed often is a highly productive individual if anything they're the opposite so get that shit gone get that shit out of your life do you need to okay if you smoke weed i don't care but if you need to smoke weed you got a problem you got a problem if you need i gotta smoke every day i gotta i gotta wake and bake you got a problem right? Because if it's a leisure thing where you want to just smoke a dube or whatever the fuck you do or backwoods, <laughs> then you do that, you know, one, it's like having a glass of wine, right? Uh, a couple times a week. But if you need to smoke weed every day, you have a problem. EPA says, we are your family. You will die with us on this chat. You know, I was thinking about that today. I'll be honest with you. I haven't been having the best week. But the people that know me the most is probably this chat. And the reason I say that is because I don't plan the shit I say. The shit I say is not planned out. I don't have a, um, uh, whatchamacallit, a, uh, notes generally. I just kind of pop off. And I'm like, you know, every day I talk to six, every three, three times a week, I talk to 600 people for an hour and a half. So when I get down, I go, you know what? I'm going to talk to a bunch of guys today or girls and people that like what I have to hear and pay for, for some of the stuff I have to do. So even when you're at your lowest, cause you know, let's be honest, I'm on an Island. Let's be honest. I, I am on an Island. Nobody loves what I do because I rattle the system. I rattle the, 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 uh, the playbook. The playbook is go along, get along. You got to be the go along, get along gang, Alex. You got to promote the Gen 4. You got to promote the Gen 4X. You got to promote the Shelby Super Snake. You got to promote the Whipple Tune. You got to promote, 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 promote. So let's talk about something that came up the other day that I thought was very interesting. And this, this one touches close to home. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Uh... So I don't want to I don't want to miss out on this. There was a valve body issue that happened a little controversy. So we'll talk about it. What did, can someone tell me uh there was an issue that Summit was here it is thieves in the automotive industry. So let's 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 talk about this subject matter guys. This one this one pisses me the fuck off. But it pisses me off for, for different reasons. Let's, let's listen to this guy right here. Because I, I damn near cry when I hear this guy talk. So this guy makes a valve body. A very simple valve body. Look at him. Look at him. This guy is not some fucking CEO somewhere. This is a man. And he got his fucking part copied by some shit ass China company. 79. Uh, basically, since 1979, they've been stealing people's products. And so I, we're, we're now one of their newest victims of this. And, you know, you don't mind so much being 
copied, but look at this. Th this is infuriating. So I'm taking this out of the box. <clears throat> I'm going to take it out of the couple, two, three bags they put this in. So bear with me. If you look at this, they copied his product and put his name on it. And Summit Racing was selling it. It's a valve body. So the company, the Chinese company, the tell was the machining marks. Theirs were swirled. His were straight up and down. They put his fucking name on it. And they're like, hey, I got your valve body. It fucking sucks. And he's like, where'd you buy it? They're like, Summit. He's like, I don't sell the Summit. But Summit carried the product. So Summit replied. We take the issue of counterfeit and knockoff parts very seriously. And we're unaware, we were unaware of your example until seeing this video. We put an inventory of the product. We put any inventory of the product detailed in your video on hold and have made it unsellable. We will review the speed mass with Speedmaster and take the necessary actions based on those conversations. Thank you for making us aware. This gentleman was robbed. His intellectual property was stolen. Look at him. The reason I get semi-emotional with a guy like this, because this guy looks like he works all the fucking time. And he probably made a product out of blood, sweat, and fucking tears. And this fucking Chinese shit-ass company copied his product, and Summit picked it up and started selling it, right? Knowing that Speedmaster, supposedly, allegedly, was known to be a fraudulent company. So let's talk about Ben Calamer shift forks. Let's talk about stealing something and you as a company selling that stolen product. Ben Calamer was a, he worked at a mill, a paper mill. Decided to dabble into into uh, 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 MT82 rebuilds. Then got good. Then started upgrading the shift forks on the D2, uh, D4 transmissions. And someone straight up copied the shift forks and are selling it. Ben Calamer does not sell shift forks. He puts them in the transmission and sells it to you as a stage 3 upgrade or stage 2 and 3 upgrade. Because that's the weak link in the D4 MT82. And the gears. But, you know, let's... Let's concentrate on that. So somebody steals his design and then sells it online. Knowing it's a stolen product and this gentleman's valve body was being sold in droves. Lost revenue. Did you see his shop? Did you see his shop? Like really take a look at what's going on back there. Ain't nothing special. Dude, just look at his hair. Look at it. It just... Fort Worth, uh, something else. Okay. He has like a Boston accent, so I don't think he's from Texas. Dude, this guy, I, it, it breaks my, it pisses me off. So, what do I think of people that steal? Pieces of shit. What do I think of people that promote products of people that steal? If you're a company and you're a dealer of a thing, Thief, a known thief. What does that make you? Piece of shit. So, when you steal something and then you promote the stolen product, you're just as bad as the fucking thief. Pieces of shit everywhere. That's why I'm on an island. That's why I'm by myself. That's why no one really wants to officially fuck with me. Because I say these things. I say these things because it's the fucking truth. And you know why I can feel comfortable saying it? Because I know I'm in the right. But industry-wide, it's a shh, shh don't, t t t t keep it on the DL. We're making money. So big deal, it's a stolen product. Big deal, Power by the Hour made some... Some cool cooler lines for the 6R80 with a bracket and someone stole it. Big fucking deal. Oh, and they printed out his instructions. Big fucking deal. What happens 
when the doers stop doing? Who the fuck are you going to copy then? I, I, I get mad because there's pieces of shit out there that steal and align themselves with people that promote their stolen products. Unbelievable. Get them likes up, guys. Knowledge from this channel is prices and ghost watching doesn't help the channel keep going. Email, do a screenshot of Summit saying they will destroy Speedmaster inventory tuition payment. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's why I sent you that. That's why I sent that to you today, brother Parker Performance. You and many others sent me that, and I, I, it, it fucking broke my heart, dude. I get, I get, I get fucking mad because I know what it takes to to make something. I know what it takes to to make something work, and the, and and then someone just goes swipe. See you later. And I'm just going to sell it as my own for the same fucking price or undercut the original person's price. I want to just blast people in the fucking face, bro. I just want to blast every motherfucker that I know is a thief-ass piece of shit, but whatever. Who the fuck am I? I'm a nobody. Boy, it pisses me off. Oh, yeah. Don't get me started on that. Don't get me started on that situation, bro. That, that I, 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 On a personal level, on a personal level, I'm on an island on a personal level. I don't fuck with nobody. I don't fuck with nobody on a personal level. Fuck everybody. Fuck everybody. It's me and me and you guys, of course. In my opinion, Summit is on the list along with Speedmaster when I sit down with my lawyer. Exactly. You can't be the drug dealer and say, oh, I didn't know this fentanyl was killing you. I'm going to stop selling it. You, <laughs> could you imagine? I didn't make it. I just sold it. Oh. Oh, okay. Cool. You just sold it. Bro. You're the same. You're the same. It's one of the reasons I don't fuck with Auto Mafia too. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you <said laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on there. I don't <laughs> Parker Performance said that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the backstory. Yeah, seriously, like like uh it, it does matter. Look, what we have built here has not been duplicated in this industry ever. Think about what this channel has done with the companies, the people. The memberships, the networking, the truth that comes out of it. No one has duplicated something like this. So what's the byproduct of me doing this? You, you're on an island. You're persona non grata. You don't get invited to the cool events and that's okay. Because I'd rather be real than be with the in crowd. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Thank you for speaking the truth. That guy I feel for. Because Ben Callumer talks to me. Jake talks to me and I see these people just doing stuff and I'm like, I can't stop it because stealing has been around since the beginning of time. I'm sure some dude killed a couple of saber tooth tigers, brought them home and some motherfucker was like, ah, you got three of them. You could spare one. Get over to his cave, took one. And he, and what happens if that guy goes, you know what? I'm dipping. I keep, I keep missing out on my supply here. So I'm going to go to another cave. Now that guy starves. So what happens if Jake from Power by the Hour, Ben Calamer, and Lund Racing stop? Where's the innovation? Where are you gonna get your tuning? Where are you gonna where are you gonna try to learn from? Where are you what are you gonna try to steal and suck off from? What are you gonna try to order, take apart, look at, look? Industrial espionage has been going on since the beginning of time. But straight ripping the shit? I don't mind if... Um, I'm still fucking mad. I don't mind if you buy a Ben Calmer transmission, take it apart, look at his bill of shit forks and go, God damn it, he did a really good job. Maybe we can make something not a direct ripoff, but something that we can offer that's similar 
Not a direct ripoff. And then, no, the fucking direct ripoff. Garrett from Second Shift Racing. Smart man. He patented something he's making. A patented design. But that doesn't necessarily stop people from straight ripping it. Look at what happened with China. Jake, 4R200 hub. Now, the smart thing about the 4R200 hub, he patented it, made a limited design, and then only one tuner can actually tune it properly. And the thing is, it's so simple. This is how I know tuners don't know what the fuck they're doing. A fucking 4R200 hub is so simple to tune without the overdrive that it tells me that every fucking tuner that says no to the 4R200 hub has no fucking idea how to tune because all you have to do is think three gears. What do you do with the rest? Oh, the 4R200 hub took legitimacy away from every other coyote tuner ah we don't fuck with it why not what if the customer wants it well, it's stupid you i think it's way better to launch with a 4.1 first and land on a 2.3 second gear yeah 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 that's way more efficient dickhead i think it's i think it's better to launch in first fucking gear with a 410 first with a 315 rear gear ratio and land on a 2-3 and then do like a 1-8 a and a 1-3 gear ratio. Fuck stupid people. Just sending some love because I appreciate you and your knowledge and experiences. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I, I'm sorry if I get off kilter sometimes. I, I, just, I just think this industry is, and I'm saying automotive in general, it's just the biggest piece of shit. Full of, full of no talent, stealing, cuck ass, bitch ass, no nothing, stone, tune stealing, salesman y bullshit, disingenuous cock suckers all over the fucking place. Like, it hit me. Today it hit me. I was just like, fuck all this. Sound clip, I don't fuck with you. <laughs> what do you think of about LF? P I L F P idlers and lower crank versus Mecco for <laughs> two and a half performance. Why don't you just ask me about I don't know a steam engines? <laughs> what the fuck are you even saying? What do you think about L F P idlers and lower crank versus Mecco for O three O four Cobras? I have as much knowledge about that as I have about a fucking flathead Ford. I love you. Product designs get stolen because it's permissible by law in order to prevent monopolies. And it doesn't make sense because copyright laws will stomp you for supporting an IP. Did ProCharger copy somebody's crank support? Not copy, but let's just say they were inspired. China has some bullshit commie attitude towards inventions. It belongs to everyone type attitude. US should have done a trade embargo on them decades ago. Straight trash. Now, see, you got to understand, JL. I can get, I can, I, I can. When you, when you get to this mood, you can make irrational decisions. It's good to go for a long walk. It's good just to go for a, a long walk. And the, the problem is the long walk pisses me off even more. Like I come back thinking about everything. Like my brain's constantly firing and I'm just like, fuck it, Jesus. What do you do? And then you go, okay, it's all good. And then you hope, you hope that the friends you've made in this industry, you know, like are consistent. And then when they're not, you go, damn, that's, it's disappointing. <laughs> Must be a tough week for you. Not, uh, yes and no. We went from dating advice to theft. So you're paying, so you're saying a $25,000 power glide isn't necessary? No. <laughs> if you're paying $25,000 for a glider 400, you got fucked. <laughs> I think a really well-built turbo 400 tops is like 13 to 15. Everything, all in. What point should I weld an axle tube to do C-clip eliminators on my Gen 1 manual? 10 fives are quicker. Yes, right now. Right fucking now. I've seen people ask um, um, one of the guys on the chat. Uh, uh, fuck. Zane. In Zane Mustang. He bent his axle tube running like 11s. Man, LFP and Marco were covered like that years ago. And Marco, were co we covered like that like 20 years ago. Alex, have you ever felt the... <laughs> Have you ever felt the BBC double pumper? I got to ride in one. <laughs> Did you mean a big block Chevy double pumper? 
Because BBC, yeah. Uh, fucking trades are just as bad as Alex, meaning assholes just steal your tools. Mecco claims LFP stole their design. Oh, come on. I don't know anything. I, dude, you're, you're talking some shit I don't know about. Parker says, I watched an irrational decision moment happening at Wingstop tonight between two DoorDash drivers and used it as an example at the diner, dinner table to teach my three kids actions, reactions, behavior. Yeah. I could have lost it all. I could have lost it all if I would have made some irrational decisions. And, you know, I have a kind of a public show. And I can't go out there popping off all my cocksucker and, and doing detrimental shit. But I'm starting to see moves by people that I thought were solid. And I'm like, cool. So, never get comfortable. You know what I mean? Like, never get comfortable. Never get to the point where you feel you are in a good position anywhere at any time ever. I'm good with the lunch, so don't worry about that. That's all good. It has nothing to do with them. My job, they, they're, they're family. And you guys are family. But man, everyone else can go suck a fat dick, bro. And, I, and that's okay. That's okay. I'll, Alex on an island. It's all good. Um, ba, 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 ba. What blower and fuel setup should I use on my steam engine for a thousand horsepower daily driving? Uh, bro, <laughs> twenty five thousand. Why would you pay twenty five thousand for a fucking glide, bro? <laughs> oh, fuck. the reed case, billet internal, Cohen converter, everything that was in my GT five hundred. I think was like seventeen or eighteen. I sold it to the Lunds for a certain price, and I'm going to buy it back because it's going to go in the fair mall. I wonder what shops people are stealing turbo kit designs and selling them. Ha! <laughs> I paid 10 k for my 400 with a Neil Chance converter that and Alex and John tuned nine seconds all day. Oh, yeah, but you're not sevens. Have you figured out which turbo kit you're going to go with the fair mall? No. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Let's, let's finish that up. So um, I hope so, Fernando Perez. The fair mall is done. Fair mall is done. And uh, I paid it. Woo wee! I'll make a video about that when it shows up. Ben Calmer had some issues with the slave cylinder on the on the Corvette, so uh, I'm hoping to pick them up together. The shipper says he can pick it up late this week, late 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 this month. So I got to get with 1320 Fab, the shipper Ben, try to get them all together from over here and see what happens. Thank you so much, Magyar Low. So in terms of turbo kits, I don't know. There is no real kit per se with what I want to do. I don't think I'm going to run motor mounts. I think I'm going to plate the motor. I'm going to set it low. Nice. Get some clearance. I have the manifold. They're Holly manifolds. The same ones that were on the Grey Goose when it ran low seven. So I know they, they, they can flow. I committed to a carbureted. I committed to a carbureted Coyote. This was $800 from Sullivan. This is a 4150 flanged to Coyote direct bolt-in situation. I'm going to get an IRD or a CSR, whatever the hell, carburetor. And um, then I have to pick a standalone. So they don't, right. The, the problem is how the fuck am I going to make my own turbo kit? It is a Fox body. So what are you going to do? Like, like, did I ever send myself pictures of the, of, the, of the Fairmont? I don't think so. I'll show you pictures of the Fairmont. They did a phenomenal job. They didn't paint the cage because it was going to be pretty expensive. So I'm going to have to get it here and I have to just clean it up and paint it and everything. Um, Summit Racing, Speedmaster, we're destroying. Oh, someone, someone sent me a thing that Summit Racing said they're destroying all their products so they don't get sold. Okay. Let me see if I have um, Fairmont picks. Okay. Let me, let, okay. Give me a second, guys. I'm going to email myself. Pictures of the Fairmont. And again, I don't know about turbo kits when it comes to Fox bodies. I have no idea. So, uh, to compose to myself. So, I'm going to email myself pictures of the Fairmont so that I can share it with you guys. And we'll end the video there. But if you guys send me um, on, on Patreon or whatever, send me links on Patreon if you're a Patreon member of Coyote Single Turbo Kits for Fairmonts. I think um, CG Fab has some, but I want something that's able to make over a thousand or eleven hundred. I think that's where the Fairmont is gonna live. Okay, so wow, 
what is this boom 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 so sorry guys I'm, I'm gonna get you um photos of the Fairmont uh, and then I'll make a video of it you know in person wow he sent me a bunch of um pictures he did the front the back everything okay select and then send okay so hopefully the pictures weren't that high resolution someone said just tell ask jake to make it slow 99 you don't understand <laughs> okay i should have read the whole thing <laughs> that's very good i love your slow 99 by the way did you get the c note that was in the cup Come on, Bryson, fall back. I'm no mechanic. Thank you, James. Aldo kit. Aldo, no. Aldo doesn't make a Fox body specific kit. I'd have to send it to him. And that's big money. Badger, GT500 says, I saw that you like my IG story. Uh, which one were you? You're Jose Cabrera? Jose Cabrera, I think. Jose Cabrera, I think. Yes, if, if that was you. <clears throat> All right, so let me see. Okay, Jesus. Uh... All right, so let's take a look at the Fairmont pictures and we'll end the show here. So I sent the Fairmont to 1320 Fabrication in Maryland and they quoted me about 20,000 bucks to get everything done. The quote went over by a little bit, which I totally expect. You cannot stick to a quote. Uh, it ended up being a little bit over 20, but this is everything I got going on. So mini tub, okay? So now plenty of room for activities in the uh, rear area there. The front Car, the, the front of the car the, it has been tubular. See, all of it is tubular now. So uh, tons of room. Yes, I'm stupid and crazy by putting $20,000 into a $2,000 car. But this car has emotional equity in my life. Again, I'm on a fucking island and certain things are keeping me going. And this is it. This is one of the, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Not many things keep me going. This motherfucker is keeping me going. Um, again, uh, you know, 10 point multiple points i mean just just ridiculous amount of fab work floors were done in the trunk see uh bars everything yeah 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 like main hoop in a rust bucket so once i get it back i gotta get all this cleaned up and painted right get it all cleaned up and painted and then start seats dash column not even i'm not gonna put a dash i'm just gonna put like a little you know whatever uh standalone uh heads up display i use here but yeah there you go this is uh uh, intercooler mount uh radiator mount i had to send them an intercooler i had to send them a radiator it's the guy welding up a storm here yeah 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 yeah. so i committed guys and this is thanks to you this is all thanks to you you guys were able to make this happen you made my dreams come true and there it is the fairmont has a cage fucking nice welds dimed up no i mean they don't they don't look nothing like turvy's welds but uh i'd like to say that they're pretty good um, and I don't know what other pictures I have here. They did the trunk also. Um, the trunk needed to get, see, I don't want to click on these because I don't know what they are. So before I click on them, make sure they're not like, you know, big ball shot I sent to somebody. Oh, okay. Da, 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 da. Let me see. There's a picture of the trunk that um, they had to, okay. So the trunk, remember, now that the now that the car was mini tub, the hinges from the trunk hit the mini tub so they had to pin it on so i have a really nice pin system and a really nasty trunk but look at the alignment bro i love these guys 1325 you did good i gotta get headlights I, i'm almost wanting to paint the car but i think the patina is fucking cool so yeah there you go that's the update that's um that'll end that update um but yeah a lot of work big money I had to do it because I'm never going to do this again, right? I'm never going to build a car. I've never built a car, quote unquote, from the ground up like this. So now the car will be safer if I want to go racing. Put a single turbo, carbureted, turbo 400, race car, fuel tank in the front. Just race car shit and see how it goes. Saw so a video today. Search Tim Lynch's 1500 Fox body. Okay, make sure they put the crossbar at that B pillar. <laughs> you don't think they know what they're doing? Bre, 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 toto. No, through the floor subframe connectors on the Fairmont. You'll see. I'll show you. I want another 79 Mercury Zephyr today, and I want uh, 302 C4. Can't you modify this fluid kit like that black 93 crowbar? You Sam, how am I going to do that? Sam, look, come on. Let's do some thinking. How am I going to do that? Am I going to weld cast stainless steel? How am I going to do that? Where do I have the facilities to do that? I don't have the welding, the fabrication knowledge. I have none of that. 
All they can do is put the motor trans cross member and get it mocked up on a plate system, then put the carburetor, put the uh, intake on and all this stuff, and then have to start delegating work. You make the turbo kit. You plumb this. You plumb that. Da-da-da. Electronics. Da-da-da. That's just how it's got to be. <clears throat> make it nice inside, clear coat the outside. I don't know about clear coating patina. I think that's kind of weird. If you painted it, what color would you do? The same exact color. I would not change the color scheme. I would do the exact same color. I just love how it looks. They sent me a picture of just sitting there looking all pretty. And I'm like, you know what? Call it gay all you want. I know it's got dumb wheels in the front. But they pinned the hood on and they lined it up. Look at that. Look at that. I love you guys. But yeah, when you look at this car, it, it's kind of shiny, you know? Imagine this car with a good front end, not this. You obviously make this flat and make it, or you buy one of those one-piece deals that looks good. So that means the bumper has to go, which sucks. But buy like a one-piece, you know, like a, like a, a whole nose for it with the air dam. And then paint it this color. Like repaint it this exact color color or keep it as is i think keeping it as is would be cool but but the top is like primer so i have to definitely um do something about that but i don't know if i get a wild hair and paint the whole thing and make it actually nice and it's not crazy money you, we'll see guys i'm years away <laughs> this thing at least a year away from even having a, you know having it move under its own power <clears throat> i don't even know painters in my area i know nobody i know no when i say i'm on an island guys I genuinely tell you I'm on an island. I have no fabrication plug. I had to send it to Maryland. I, I have no electrician plug. And the ones that I do are a year out. The guy that wants to wire something and puts it is a year out. And he kind of, kind of is a bit of a hard guy to work with. I need a certain timeline. I need to delegate the work. I need to become a project manager. And this car is going to show me how stupid it is to build the race car. And I'm going to detail it with you guys because getting into racing is no fucking cheap man's game. I guarantee after it's all said and done, I'm going to have damn near $70,000 in this car. The Grey Goose wrap on it would be badass. Um, just mad. You just mad you got 20% PR on your car loan. Now my fault, bro. Fix that credit. What's he talking about? Build the hot side with a PVC. Ship it to a fab shop. They'll build it. What you send? Uh... I have access to people. Billet Pro Shops is a great resource. Shout out to um, the guys, Matt Brunette and everything at Billet Pro Shops. Man, they, I was like, hey, I need a... They have a list of what they did to their Coyote Swap Fox, Fox Body. Gump's list. And I go, I need half of this shit on this list. And he shipped it today. Would the guy that did the Grey Goose's Turbo be a viable option? No, because he works for Senior. So how is it going to work that I take my car to Tampa... Drop it off at Seniors as if it's my fucking shop. Have Ryan work for me at Seniors shop. That's fucking weird. And can I afford Ryan? I don't know. People may call Hush Money gay now, but they'll be silent when you got them at the strip. This is going to be the, um, the overlying theme of Hush Money. Get it to run as quick as possible. Vet the chassis. Vet the combo with a stock motor. Lock cams. Figure it out. That is a sacrificial lamb. I'm going to have probably three motors in this thing before I have the final version. So this is going to be what I'm going to do. This is the plan long term, probably within two years. Obviously, the GT500 is going to get raced in the middle of that, run an eight and sold. But the money's not going towards that. This car is going to be with channel money. GT500 money is house money. So go ahead and vet the combo that way. See how fast it goes. Push it, push it, push it till it can't push no more. Stick an illuminator in it. Push it, push it, push it till it can't go no more. And once I'm at the level of like, okay, now let's get after it. You call FFRE. You tell them what you want to do. They're going to want to dry sump. They're going to want to da-da-da. They're going to want to da-da. Okay. So then you got to make it Billy Badass. And I'm doing it for me. I don't care about competing. If I do decide to make a race or two, cool. But that's not the end goal for this situation. All right, guys. I'm going to get out of here. Long, long, long week. Not been a good week, um, but got through it. I had 600 of you stuck through the whole show. We talked GT, I'm sorry, Shelby Super GT, a.k.a. Super Snake. We talked Gen 4, Gen 4X, Crate Motors. We talked 
Working in your 20s, we talked trades, we talked STEM fields, we talked about Speedmaster, uh, the fucking selling a, a literally a ripped off part, and Summit being complicit in selling that ripped off part, and all of a sudden knowing that this is th no vetting, zero vetting, and then me making that distinction between the people that sell stolen products versus people that steal products. You're both the same kind of dumb motherfucker. I'm out of here. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Sorry if it's a little bit of a downer asshole show today, but it'll be in interesting to listen to when you're on the treadmill tomorrow at the gym. I'll be back on Sunday night, peasant chat. I'm still going to maintain the 8 o'clock time. I'm still conflicted about that, but I, think, I think I'm going to keep the 8 o'clock time, night time, so I can have like Sunday morning to do Sunday morning things and enjoy that, but we'll see if it cuts into my time and I switch the schedules around. But anyway, I'll be back on Sunday night, Peasant chat. We'll talk some shit then. Have a good rest of your night. I'll see you guys later.